I'm Sam Kennedy from Sky Studios and Digital Art Live, here to talk about what makes some mid-journey art so beautiful and powerful and how we can use that in our own art and even make our own mid-journey art even better. In my career as an illustrator, I've painted more than a thousand images for books and games. And today we're gonna talk about the principle of color temperature and warm versus cool. We'll talk about what that is. We'll look at some mid-journey art and see how it's used. Then we'll talk about when and why to use it. And then we'll go over how to implement that in your Photoshop files. I'm gonna show you some quick Photoshop cheats to get warm and cool into your uh, paintings. And then at the very end, I'm gonna show you some prompts for mid-journey that's gonna make your best mid-journey art even better. So that's what I've got for you today. Let's get into that. So look at this beautiful painting uh, in front of me here. This is uh, another just gorgeous image that, that Mid Journey has spit out. I haven't done any touches on this. And as we talked about last time, um, in our last video, we talked about grouping shapes and colors to organize your image and to make it easier and more appealing to your, to your audience. And this image does that just fine. There's these uh, reddish shapes right here. And we have some, uh, some neutral shapes here. And we have this blue shape in the background. And if you look here, I'm going to zoom in. You'll see two different temperatures of skin here. This temperature of skin is very warm, and this temperature is cool. And colors have temperatures. And we, when we look at things, generally warm temperatures come forward and blue te and cooler temperatures recede. And what I mean by when I say warm and cool, it's usually the amount of yellow and orange in a color. You can have warm greens and you can have cool greens. Um, here you can see that these, these flowers right here are quite warm, even compared to some of the darks of her red here. And then this blue here is quite cool. And I'm, let me show you a warmer blue. So here is another just gorgeous image that's really using warm versus cool quite well. This is a very warm, lots of yellow in here. And it's falling on her skin. And they've added a uh, almost a blue half of the painting here. And this is a rather warm blue, but it's still cooler than, than this warm area right here. So not only can color temperature and warm versus cool be used to separate um, items from, an, a, from a background or items from a, a foreground, it can also be a color scheme. When in this image, it uses blues versus orange as the predominant color scheme. All right, let me show you some more. So you may have a, an image like this that has conflict between a cool background and a warm foreground and that creates a nice and appealing conflict. But you can also have images that are predominantly warm. Here is a, an example of that. This is all warm. Okay. It's all within the, the realm of orange and yellow. And relatively speaking, this is a rather cool color here compared to the warm back here. So it doesn't, a cool color does not have to be blue. It just has to have less orange and yellow 
than what's next to it. So this has less orange and yellow than this over here. And then here is a predominantly cool image, even though it has skin and flowers in, just like the last one, it's predominantly cool. And whether our images are predominantly warm or predominantly cool or a mix, it's going to have an emotional reaction within the viewer. And oftentimes in cinema and animation, if you're gonna have a sad scene, uh, you'll have very cool colors. Or if you're gonna have a warm home scene, you'll have very warm colors because those colors affect us. Okay, so now you know what warm and cool is. And I just want to show you one more time how a, a, a color may be neutral. But if we add a little bit more warmth to it, suddenly there's a difference there. You can see this is a warm side. I haven't changed the value. I've just dropped a little Photoshop filter over it. This is a cool side now. If I take, if I take the warm off, take the cool off, so you, you can see that neutral color again, and put this photo filter on cool, you can see now this looks warm and this looks cool. And if I put them together, you can see there, there's quite a lot of contrast there. You can see, see the difference. This is all the same value, but one is definitely warmer. All right, so let's talk about how you can use this. All right, so here, as I said, um, it can be used as a principle of organization. Here you have a warm foreground and a cool background. Lots of... Uh, oranges and, and yellows down here, separating it from this very cool background where there's lots of blues. Uh, this is uh, an example of warm versus cool in, in a landscape. And you see, this is such a powerful way to build distances. You know, our cool colors recede, warm colors come forward. And so our eyes get that this is nearer to us than that. So here is, uh, here is one more example. And all this stuff is from uh, Mid Journey. And Mid Journey automatically uses this principle in about half of its artwork. And I would say, I would say that's about what I have, that's about what I've seen uh, in my own work in Mid Journey. I've seen it used about halfway. Some, something strong, some strong um, uh, representation of warm versus cool. But I'm gonna show you at the end of how to implement that in the images that you may be doing that'll make them even better. All right, so I want to show you some examples too where it's not working. And this is, this to me all is about the same temperature. You have these, these really saturated orange and these saturated blue, but there's not a good sense of warm versus blue here, or sorry, there, of warm versus cool here. This is kind of a, a very cool uh, orange and um, a cool blue. And there's just not a good sense here. Whereas if you look at something like this, kind of see this background here is rather cool. It's, it's less saturated. And even though there's, there's pinks and blues back here, they're rather cool, lots of grays, as opposed to this, which has more warms in it. And even this blue is warmer than this back here, or that's how we perceive it. 
And MidJourney does such a great job at this that we want to learn how to use this in our own work. So let me pull up a book cover that I did some time ago, and let's take a look at this. So, and this is an old book cover. Um, so don't be too harsh on me. And, and I'm gonna show you now uh, a very quick Photoshop uh, technique to, to really kind of drop in warms and cools. So one way I like to do it is to go to color balance and just go warmer and redder in the midtones. In the highlights, go much yellower. And then in the shadows, go bluer. Maybe add some purple in there and uh, maybe even some cyan. And you can see this is automatically warming up my painting. Now, um, you may have to uh, mask out some of what you're doing so that you're creating that contrast. So here is, here is that, uh, that same color balance layer added in with, some, with, some, uh, with a mask on it. You can see there's the mask. I, I hope that it shows up. It's pretty subtle at this point. Uh, but there it is. In general, things are just a little bit more um, cooler uh, in these middle tones. Uh, you see my, my mid is set red and increases the yellow. And then the highlights, the yellow is quite increased. And the shadows, the blue is quite increased. So the, the second tool I'm going to use is just a photo filter. So turn that on, and then this is just a photo filter. Uh, this is the generic one, and it's set up rather high. And then I dropped in a mask to just put that in the background because I, I want this cooler area back here so that it recedes. And I've kept this purple in my shadows. And then in order not to uh, cool down my shadows up here any further, I, I just mask that out. And so here is, here is this image without the warm and cool temperatures accented. And then here it is with it. Whoops, got an extra one in there. Let me throw off that. So this image now, to me, feels much more dynamic. It's more fun to look at. Uh, it's got purples and yellows going on and oranges and got these, these reds versus the purples uh, going on. And, and that's, that's much more fun to look at uh, to me than this. This was um, kind of a, almost a, a, a duo, duo chronal image that uh, I think is now better with uh, the purples and the magentas up here. So that's how you can quickly take your own art and improve the warm versus cool colors. So just grab a color balance, put your, uh, usually you're gonna go warm in the light side. So, so make your, uh, your mid-tones and your highlights a little bit more yellow and make your shadows a little bit blue and then uh, drop in a photo filter, and and you could uh, you could probably do the res the reverse of this as well uh, if you wanted to go warmer in the background and cooler in the foreground. You could do that as well. Let let's try it and just see what happens. So we'll we'll grab a photo filter, and we're going to turn this photo filter now to blue, and we're going to turn off color balance, because we were using that to warm our foreground. We're gonna copy the mask and we're gonna invert it. And now we have something that's a little bit more um, cool in front and warm in the back. And I'll bet you we can warm that up even more if we, uh, let's see. 
put a little bit more saturation behind it. Um, and here, if we turn that off, yeah, we could, uh, let's take this mask and just get rid of it back here where it's masking out some of the warmth back here. So we'll just take that out. And now you have almost a red sky and a very purplish uh, foreground. So a very powerful way to correct your paintings, to experiment and to, to just play around and have fun. And you can go back here and you, you don't know, you know, something you have done a long time ago might have a better life or a more extended uh, lifetime if you just go back and play with the warm versus cool relationships. Okay, so how do we use this in Mid Journey? Um, like I said, Mid Journey uses warm versus cool in what I've seen about 50% of, of what it does. Um, you can see very, very clearly here that the warm green grass in the foreground uh, and the warm trees. And then obviously from the atmospheric perspective, it's cooling off as it goes away. Okay, so it uses that automatically. Uh, sometimes it doesn't though. Sometimes in this image, there's almost no variation in, in color temperature. Uh, this, this is a kind of cool gray image. Uh, you do have some yellows here, but it's not a orangish yellow. It's a rather cool yellow. And so just about everything here is cool. So it doesn't always use that. So how can we tell Mid Journey to use warm versus cool? And, and the answer is to just type in um, warm light, cool shadows. Let me show you what, what I mean. So here's a good picture of a dragon. Very nice. Um, it's a beautiful image. And, uh, but I wanted to play around with this idea of warm versus cool. So here's what I came up with next. Okay. All of a sudden, it's got these very orange areas versus these very cool areas down here. You can see this is this is quite cool um, compared to this orange back here. Okay, so uh, warm light and cool shadows, and you can also play around with uh, something like an orange light and purple shadows. Uh, sometimes I'll try that. Uh, sometimes I'll even wait that prompt and give it a little bit more prominence. You can also change where it is in the prompt. But uh, I find that uh, warm light versus cool light or orange light versus purple shadows, it works really, really well. Let's look at some other examples of how you might want to use this. We'll do one more dragon. So like I said, um, Mid Journey uses warm versus cool about half the time. And this is without the prompt. And then this is the same prompt with the warm light and cool shadows. Okay, so very lovely rendering. And it's not that this is bad. It's not that there's not a place for this. But this is more eye-catching, more eye-popping. This is more cover art-esque or splash page-esque. Okay, so let's look at some more realistic uh, ways that uh, you might be able to use this. And realistic, I mean, when doing realism things. So this is a prompt that does not have it. And here is the image of the same prompt with it. Okay, so, so this is just more cinematic. It's more powerful. Um, and it's a little bit more eye-catching. So again, it's just warm light versus cool light. 
uh, and the prompt is warm light, cool shadows, or orange light and purple shadows or blue shadows. Um, you can even try something like orange, yellow, and blue color scheme, and it will try to uh, accommodate those colors. All right, and we'll do one more, maybe two more. So this is a uh, an example. Uh, I think this is a vampire elf. Is what this is. Here it is without it, and here it is with it. Again, both you both have. This is actually a little bit better design, I think. And you may not always want this warm versus cool. Um, this is an emo. You know, there's a different emotional response here than here. And if this is the emotional response you want, this is a better image. Let's take a look at one last one. This is the same prompt, uh, Vampire Elf. Here it is without, and there it is with. Okay, so we've covered what emotional or what the color temperature is uh it's the amount of orange and yellow in the color uh we've covered when you might want to use it uh, to get an emotional response we've looked at some some photoshop uh techniques to get that in your own work and we've looked at some mid-journey prompts to uh accentuate that in your in your ai creations so I wanna finish by just showing you a couple more images. This image <clears throat> is predominantly cool, but has accents of warmth in it. Okay, it's not, it's not a half and half image. It's predominantly one and not the other. And I've mentioned earlier that you can use this as a color scheme. You can use the idea as a color scheme and they don't always have to be orange and blue. Um, this has quite a lot of purple in it, but you can see this is a, an organizational principle here where the main subject is, is quite cool, even though he picks up some of the background color and the color, the background color picks up some from him. This is, he's definitely silhouetted by a warm light uh, within a, in a cool outfit. And at last, here again, there's just quite a lot of color variants in this, uh, the magentas, purples, uh, and then oranges and yellows. And you can see that the, the difference in the color temperature here in her skin where the light's hitting it versus where the shadow's hitting it. Look, this is almost purple. And this is almost uh, entirely yellow. And same thing with her face. We've got quite a lot of, of neutral colors and, and uh, cool lavender light versus warm light. So I hope that has given you an I better idea of how to use warm versus cool in your images. Use this principle and your art will be even more eye-catching and breathtaking. Good luck and I'll see you next time. I'm Paul Bussey from Digital Art Live and we have live webinar workshops each week in our community where we learn cost-effective digital art tools to tell visual stories. Even if you're just telling a story with one rendered image. Connect with us at digitalartlive.studio and you can use the link in the description below to join our free forum. If you found this video of value, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.